Hey everyone, today's episode is with Dr. Renee Wellenstein. She's so awesome. You guys know I love these doctors that went from conventional Western medicine and have bridged over into the functional medicine space because they're just so passionate about figuring out what's going on with people actually, you know, asking those questions why. And, and Dr. Renee Wellenstein is one of those people. So she is a double board certified OBGYN um, and has been working with women for over 20 years. And finally was just like, I want to help people at a deeper level than this. She shares her own story of how that happened. She actually broke her back and went through her own health challenges that brought her into looking for answers. And now she works in the functional medicine space. Um, she really specializes in adrenal dysfunction and libido libido issues with women, which is so cool to hear about. And she's talking about, yes, the emotional, the mental, the patterns, the stories that we live by, but also the things that we can look at um, to figure out what's going on with us from a physical level too, which you guys know I'm all about. So I think you guys will really enjoy hearing some of this from a deeper level from her. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Here's Dr. Renee Wellenstein. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount onto you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system. And I get a lot of questions because Um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Um, also though, in, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, aura ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so that's, that's how I approach things in higher. There's more, we do prizes every month, Nikes, Lulu's, um, all of my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. 
We do three Zoom calls a week, so you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest, and it's just, yeah, it's, like, I created my life, and I created my life the way I like, and I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives, and it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it, because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're, like, wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So... Uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com, and you can request a call, and we can see if if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily and if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my Keto in and out program um, on my website. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60-day course teaching you how to do keto, or 30 days of keto, and then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self-guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes. And all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. All right. So Dr. Renee, I'm so excited to talk about a couple of things today with you. I definitely want to talk about libido because I don't think enough people are talking about this and everyone is like, when I get into the nitty gritty with people one-on-one, -on -one, I'm like, you know, how's the relationship? And it's like, I have no sex drive. I don't know what's wrong with me. And there's all this shaming and I'll just force myself to do it, you know? Um, and also we're going to transition into talking about burnout and adrenal, you know, fatigue and these things that people have heard about and are maybe wondering mm -hmm. if they have. Um, but first, before we get into that, I was wondering if you could talk about your transition from going and, you know, double board certified OBGYN and why you transition more into this functional health space. I would love to. Well, thank you for having me first and foremost. I'm really excited to be here. And, you know, it was not an intentional transition. I thought I was going to be in conventional OBGYN for the rest of my life. And I always, I always make that now that distinction of conventional, because I am now in the alternative world, but you know, I had trained, I got married, I had twins, I moved to the country. Like I was living what I thought was the dream life. And, yeah. uh, until nine, about nine years ago, May of 2012, I had bought my dream horse shortly before then, um, because I lived in the country and I could finally nice. have my horse that I wanted since I was a little girl Yeah, and I fell off that horse. And I always say that's where my story began. So not to belabor what happened over the next couple of years, but essentially my, my journey was that of chasing these weird symptoms that my own doctors couldn't put their fingers on. And, you know, in that two, two years, I was, my scope of OBGYN was limited. I could no longer deliver. I could no longer operate because I sustained a, a broken back from that fall. Mm -hmm. So a pretty major life changing injury. Mm -hmm. And over that next two years, I was sort of stuck in this victim mode. Number one, I was yeah. poor me. No one understands the pain I'm going through. And then on top of that, I was having all these weird symptoms. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. I was gaining weight. I had no libido. I was, you know, having these weird cravings. I could care less to eat healthy. I was just living on chips and whatever I could find in the cabinet. because I was just completely exhausted. Yeah. And of course that sounds like depression. And so back in that world of the conventional medical model, that is the box I actually agreed with. I said, must be depression because yeah. I did have this life changing yeah. injury and I am a little sad, but this doesn't feel like depression, but there was no other label that we could put on it. <laughs> so I danced down that road of depression. Yeah. I was put on an antidepressant and, you know, lo and behold, a few months later, I had all of the side effects and I still had my symptoms. So what happens when you fail one antidepressant, you try another, yeah. it's not that you have the wrong diagnosis. And I didn't know any better at this point. I had no idea at this point, what functional medicine was. I just knew one way of getting better. And that is making a diagnosis and giving a pill. Right. So I tried the second antidepressant. And when I failed that second one, this is when I was like, there is something else going on, you know? And I was at the point in my life, in my medical community, whereby I had flunked out of physical therapy. No one mm -hmm. wants to see chronic back pain. Mm -hmm. All of my medical colleagues, you know, they're my friends, but they're all turning their backs on me saying, we don't know what else to do. Yeah. Like you are just going to have to live with these symptoms. And mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, 
was unacceptable. You know, there came a point a few months prior to the journey down antidepressant road, whereby I told my husband, I, I can't live like this. And here I am a mom of young twins thinking of not continuing to live because this is how helpless and hopeless I felt. And it was even worse after I failed these two antidepressants. And around the same time where I was in the midst of coming off my second antidepressant, I was put in contact with a functional medicine doc. And Mm. I had no idea that this entire realm of medicine existed, which is kind of bizarre. Yeah. And this is about seven years ago. And so um, I was actually put in touch with her because I was selling anti-aging skincare because I wanted to have some fun in life. And my job at that point was just really non-fulfilling to do pap smears all day. Like I was not delivering the babies. I wasn't feeling like I was changing lives anymore. And that's the whole reason I got into medicine. So I got on the phone one night with this woman and, you know, in about a half hour conversation, uh, I got a correct diagnosis of potentially an adrenal dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I'm on, on the phone with her, I'm looking it up and I'm like, oh my gosh, these are all my symptoms. And we subsequently confirmed it in the office with blood work and saliva testing and such. Yeah. But, um, you know, she had pretty much pinpointed what was going on with me, sort of kind of an outline of a treatment plan and offered me a job in functional medicine. And now I had just met this woman, but there was such a need in our area. She was about three and a half hours from where I live. Mm-hmm. And in my area in central New York, people were driving to her in Western New York hours to see her Mm -hmm. because people just doctors just aren't practicing this type of medicine. It is definitely, you know, out of the box thinking it's, it's much harder, um, but it's much more fulfilling in my opinion. So while on the phone with her, I looked up functional medicine and she told me exactly where she did her fellowship. And so I always tell the story of how, when I got on the phone with her, I was actually sitting in bed. It was, it was later at night. My husband went in to take a shower when he came out, I had hung up the phone with her and I said, okay, I have adrenal dysfunction. I'm going to start doing this, this, and this. Oh, and by the way, I'm going back and doing a fellowship in functional medicine uh-huh. and leaving the hospital as an OBGYN. And I'm going to join this woman in practice. <laughs> and he goes, how long was I in the shower for? <laughs> Amazing. So, you just felt the truth of it instantly, right? You know, yeah. and, and that is the first time that I actually went with my gut. You know, like and now mm-hmm. I, I'm very intuitive now and go with my gut feeling because it never Beautiful. leads me down the wrong path. But that Amen. was the first time where I said, this is, this is, this is going to help me. And there has to be so many other women out there who feel yeah. as helpless and hopeless as I do in the situation. And I actually had the entire medical community around me. And I felt like that. Imagine these women out there that have no idea that there is something that they can do naturally. Yeah. It does take time, but to, to feel better. You know, and how many women are having that thought at night? Like, I can't go on like this, right? How many women are on antidepressants? So many, you know, and we actually let's shift into this right now. Cause I know if somebody's listening, they're wanting to know what, what are these symptoms? And so can you describe what are the symptoms? And then also what are the tests? You know, what can they go get tested for to find out if they may have these same things? Well, first and foremost, I just want to precede all of the symptoms in the, in the, in the, diagnosis, um, by saying that if you go to your regular doctor, they're probably going to look like at you, like you have 10 heads, you know, like, what are you talking about? The only issues with adrenals are, you know, these extreme conditions called Addison's and Cushing's. And (laughs) that's not what we're talking about here. Those are medical emergencies. We're talking about a dysfunction in something called cortisol, which is our stress hormone that has a very predictable secretion. It's higher in the morning to get us out of bed. And then it falls throughout the day and it's lower at night, at which time melatonin, another hormone that helps us sleep comes up. And those two are on a teeter totter, you know, cortisol comes up in the morning, melatonin goes down and vice versa as the, as the sun goes down and nighttime comes. So, you know, you gotta be very careful. There are many more open-minded docs out there. Um, a lot of them, I was one of them for a while where I had a lot of patients coming to me to ask me about these things. And I would always say, in my realm of OBGYN, it was always bioidentical hormones. I would always say, right. I don't know enough about them, but let me do your exam and send you back to your, your doctor who knows more about those. Mm-hmm. Same with some docs out there. They may know that this is a condition that a lot of people are asking about, but they may not know how to uh, work yeah. it up. Right. So there's those kind of, you know, there's 
that dual duality there. There's some that are just going to say you're crazy. Stop reading things on the hundred percent. Yeah. You got to go to the right things. doctor. Right. <laughs> you so, have to go to a functional medicine doctor. Nat- exactly. Functional <laughs> medicine, naturopathic, you right. know, um, even chiropractors, a lot of chiropractors right. are out there. So, right. um, so that's number one, but some of the symptoms are, and these are things, and, and I'm not saying everyone who is on an antidepressant doesn't have depression. However, here's what I would really encourage your audience to think about is if you are, and you don't feel like you're getting better, or they're just not exactly taking the symptoms away, which I'm going to talk about, maybe start thinking that there may be something else going on, right? Yeah. Because I always say you have to be your biggest advocate for your health. Yeah. Docs these days are really busy. I was one of them. I get it. And they don't have time to learn about all these other things going on aside from what we weren't learned in medical school. Mm-hmm. So my symptoms and, and the, the most frequent symptoms I see are those that really have struggled to get out of bed in the morning, even after a good night's sleep. Yeah. Um, you know, these are, they pretty much there's different levels of adrenal dysfunction, depending on where you are on kind of the spectrum, but generally your lower energy throughout the day, you kind of translate that into, you know, saying you're fatigued, just unmotivated. And it's really not a motivation thing. It's just that you're really tired. Mm -hmm. That generally leads to poorer eating habits. Like I had, you know, like I didn't feel like eating a salad that didn't, you know, I wanted those comfort foods. I wanted the, the sugars, you know, I wanted, I lived on caffeine. Your body's like, I need energy somewhere. Correct. And so that you're looking for that, those chips, that ice cream, that quick quick candy. Correct. And you would get a quick fix, but then you quickly plummet. Exactly. Salt, salty cravings, you know, again, the saltier the chip, the better, uh, usually weight gain, usually around the middle. Um, and you know, I think the biggest, sometimes brain fog, but I think the biggest thing that women get hit with is this energy and this like yeah. just extreme fatigue where I really could care less. I'd go to work, I'd come home and I just lay on the couch and I, I had, I had two young kids looking at me like, mom, I want to do something. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I can't, you know, I'm exhausted. Yeah. And, uh, in my particular situation, if I stayed up beyond like 10, I would get a second wind. So it's like that cortisol goes up around midnight. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and so then I would be a hard time for me to go back to sleep Mm -hmm. and then there's other people who are a little more extreme than I was, whereby they're just spent all day and they just fall into bed at night and Mm -hmm. regardless of the hour. Mm -hmm. So, um, those are the common, most common symptoms that I see. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, there's others as well, but generally it's, it's the energy issue that kind of leads to a lot of other things, including the the poor eating habits, the weight gain yeah. and the cortisol actually can contribute to the weight gain as well. So, right. And I appreciate you sharing this so much because so many, there are so many people out there experiencing this every day and they just think that that's just how it has to be. They don't understand. They're not, not realizing they, I mean, they kind of know something's wrong, but they're like, I guess it's just how I am. Like, and it's like, no, 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 something is actually wrong and we, it can be fixed. And I love your, um, message of like, it's okay. Like bioidentical hormones, for example, or let's say maybe T3 and things like that. Like mm. they, they can serve their place in my opinion, like as a bridge, but it's all in, in my, and like, okay, the body can heal itself. So let's go deeper. Maybe you can use as a bridge while you get there, but mm. we can, you know, the question that isn't being answered, I believe in Western medicine is why, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like, you have this. Why? Well, we don't know, but just take this. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know? And you guys are the, like the freaking heroes of the medical industry. Cause you're like, why are you tired? Why are you depressed? Why do you have low libido? Let's explore, let's go deeper. And, you know, I appreciate you sharing those symptoms. Cause like, if this is you, when you're listening, keep listening because you're the body can heal itself. Look at your skin. You get a sc- scab, it heals. It's mm-hmm. capable of it, but it takes more than just a pill. That's not, that's not, that isn't fixing it at all. So we got to go root cause. So now can we go into that? What are some of the things that you have found that you could share that lead into the healing of these kind of symptoms? Well, you know, um, there's a huge mind body connection, yeah. you know, and I, and here's the other thing, I think when we kind of go down that rabbit hole, which a lot of, we, you know, healthcare paints the picture of making a diagnosis and taking a pill, you know, a lot of times you get the side effects of the pill and you're just thinking, gosh, I'm gonna have to feel awful for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, and then you get the weight gain and you start feeling awful about yourself and you're like, there's no hope. And you kind of fall into that victim mode. Like yeah. your yeah. body cannot heal if you're constantly, what was me? And, and again, I, I say all this from very lovingly, cause this was yeah. me, this right. was me. And I also say about the conventional world with the diagnosis of pill, cause that's how I was trained. So if anyone's listening and that's how your doc thinks, 
that's not making them a bad doctor. That's just how we're trained. That's just what they do. That's, that's what their we job. do. We don't learn about nutrition. We learn <laughs> right. hours and hours and hours about making diagnoses and what pill to prescribe and what are the side effects of the pill because they can literally, they can seriously kill someone. Right. right but right. I think, you know, here's number one, it's, you know, the first step to healing is just that validation that even with burnout, like it's a real thing. It's not in your head. Right. And, you know, and knowing that you can get better and feel better. And I always say that even the, st- the things we talk about here, they're, they're simple, but they're not easy because again, mm. if we're taking someone with burnout and really low energy, it's going to feel like a lot to not drink that pot of coffee or not dr- reach for those chips or those energy drinks right. or the candy. Right. Right. Or, or to think, you know, um, oh my gosh, I, you know, you want me to go out in nature and take a walk, or you want me to, mm-hmm. you know, like all these things, it's going to seem hard because you already don't have the energy. Right. Right. But just making that effort of like, okay, this is not in my head. This is real. Whatever the, you know, the situation may be kind of having it in your mindset that, okay, it's not a quick fix. That's if I want a quick fix, I'm going to go to my doctor. I'm going to get the pill. Right. And and again, just knowing that that's not going to, in the long term, make you better. That's just going right. to put a bandaid on it. Right. Um, so if you're invested in in really living a long, healthy, you know, life, then then start working on the why. Yeah. And so, and a lot of it, I have to say, with all of this, and and what we practice on functional medicine is more proactive healthcare, not reactive. Right. Like right. when I was in that conventional world, it's reactive. You right. You know, have a symptom, got it, make a disease diagnosis usually, and put you on a pill. And, you know, my goal is to educate and stand on my platform and talk about how can we be, when you start having those early stages of a lot of hormone imbalance or, you know, burnout, how do we intervene? So we don't get to that point where we need that pill. And it, and a lot of it starts with lifestyle. A hundred percent. No. And I appreciate that, that, you know, that it starts in the way that you think, you know, I tell my clients often, I'm like, everything in your life right now is just purely a result of the way that you think. And I, you know, I went through major life catastrophe too. And I had to accept that there was trauma, there was programming, there were stories in me that were causing me to behave in all the ways that I was behaving in my life. And I think with, you know, I'm sure you find with your clients, like, why do they have adrenal burnout or whatever we want to call it, adrenal disorder? function, you know, issues. It's generally created by the way that they're living because of the stories that they believe and the unhealed traumas. And I have to show my value by working really hard and working out really hard and being everything for everyone. And you so you're just literally exhausting yourself, trying to prove your worth to the world. And I have found that's like, that's where it starts is that, that deep emotional body. And I mean, I love that. That's your, your first uh, test to find out what's wrong is like, it's spiritual you know, it's, it's those beliefs, it's mindset, however you want to put it beyond that though. I love that. I'm sure you also do tests with your clients that come to you. So what are some of the tests that you would do for someone who has these symptoms? Well, for burnout in particular, the best test is a saliva test and it's a four point saliva test. You know, a lot of docs will say, Oh, well, you think you have a adrenal issue. Let's just send you for blood work and get a cortisol test. And that's really not the most accurate way, unless you're going to go back throughout the day and get serial tests done to see what you're doing throughout the day. Number one, it doesn't test for the free hormone, which is kind of what we want to see. And, you know, the sheer act, this used to be me of getting my blood drawn would send my cortisol level through the roof. So it's, you know, not only that, you know, a lot of times you go to the lab, you're rushed into work, you walk in, the lab is full, you know, like all these scenarios, I've heard it all. I've heard all from my former patients when I was in a brick and mortar of like, I had to get to work. I saw someone I didn't like in the lab, you know, someone I didn't like was drawing my blood. Like all these things can falsely elevate your cortisol. So if you can get a kit whereby you just spit in a tube at home in the comforts of your own house, um, four times in a day. So throughout the day, so you can see where you start in the morning, where you are midday, where you are, uh, around dinner time and at bedtime, that is the best way to kind of get the picture of yeah. what you're doing in a 24 hour period. Are there other, uh, tests that you tend to run? Cause you find, you know, downstream effects from possible quarters, you know, what else are you looking for? Well, you can do hormone testing because a lot of times with, um, with adrenal issues, uh, there's something called pregnenolone steel and I won't get too technical, but there is this 
beautiful hormone cascade that I never loved as, as an OBGYN, but I loved as a functional medicine doc, because it really tells a story where, you know, it all starts with cholesterol to make our hormones, but your body will prioritize where it puts the precursors to hormones, meaning the things that make our hormones. So for instance, if you're stressed, you're going to steal away from testosterone and estrogen and progesterone and put it all to cortisol because they're all in that little matrix of the hormonal pathway. Mm -hmm. And so there is this concept whereby when you're super stressed, a lot of times you'll steal cholesterol and all the precursors to make that cortisol, uh, just to stay, you know, keep your body in that fight or flight mode. Right. Um, so you can check, you know, the, the estrogen, the progesterone, testosterone, um, and definitely can affect all of them. And again, those can be done, those can estrogen and progesterone can be done in blood work. Um, you know, estradiol and progesterone, they're pretty accurate in blood work. But again, as a functional medicine doc, you kind of want to be, you want to know the optimal levels. If a woman is cycling where she should be and testosterone, of course, you have to check a few more things for testosterone, unless your lab will, will show a free testosterone level, but that's the most accurate. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are all pretty accurate if, and again, I say this because there's a lot of people out there that functional medicine testing can be expensive yeah. and I get it. And I tried to be between the cost of usually seeing a functional medicine doc, which is usually out of pocket because, you know, functional medicine is just not standard of care. So what other doctor spends an hour with you going through everything, you know? So, um, until we became, we become sort of recognized as making a difference in people's health and getting reimbursed accordingly from insurance companies, a lot of docs aren't going to take insurance. So, you know, they're, they're seeing you as, oh, you're a five minute visit. No, 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 no. You, and so when they start seeing functional medicine docs impact on, on the health of, of people in general, um, and that who knows when that's going to be, but I definitely try to say, okay, where can we get regular labs tested? Like with your doctor and have your, your functional medicine doc interpret them and what is kind of specialty testing. And definitely of all of the, those hormones, um, I, in my opinion, cortisol with the saliva is probably the most important uh, to get not in blood work. Um, you know, even thyroid, you know, thyroid's another tricky little subject because yeah. a lot of docs will just check TSH and I'm like, no, 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 yeah. no. You're missing. Like that is probably my least favorite of the thyroid tests. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it's like, okay. And yeah. <laughs> TSH, TSH great. Okay. Let's check all the other stops in the yeah. production of thyroid. And how do we even know how much is actually actively in your body? So yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like a pitch. It's like a whole picture, you know, T3, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, check for antibodies, make sure, you know, like, I know. And it can be really a story. If you get all the right numbers right. where you're putting your resources. So it's in my opinion, I, I geek out in this. I love it. Yeah. I'm like, Oh no, this is from stress or no, it looks like a pot, possibly a nutrient deficiency or right. Right. You know, you know, magnesium is needed. These are the things that are needed for that conversion. Maybe yeah. let's check your magnesium levels. Maybe you're just magnesium deficient. Oh, exactly. we fixed the, the broken link in the chain, you know, which so, so many people, so many women are magnesium deficient and oh, yeah. B complex. Those are the two that I pretty much, I don't think I've ever worked with a woman or rarely that is, is not deficient in her B vitamins and magnesium. Yeah. And okay. Let's go back to what you were talking about. Cortisol stealing from testosterone, estrogen. Okay. Cause what do we need those for? Well, one, we need them for good body composition. Yeah. Like with women, I'm like, you know, all the testosterone we can get, we don't have that much. So like, we want that. Yeah. We want estrogen also for that purpose, but we also need that for libido, right? Yeah. So your yeah. cortisol is really high. And I think, you know, this trans is, this goes for men too. I I'm like, gosh, the lifestyle for men is not conducive at all to healthy testosterone levels. They're literally sitting in a box blocked from sunlight. They're not getting out any sort of like hunting or being active or even like fighting and sparring or you know, like what men do. Like it's, it's this high stress lifestyle stuck in a box with processed foods, like good luck, you know? And so, um, I would love to talk about this connection with libido. I love that you're talking talking about libido, first of all. Mm -hmm. Um, but second of all, can you go into a little bit of some of the, I guess, emotional and physical impacts on libido and what you're seeing in your work? Yeah. Well, here's the, here's a little caveat, you know, and I, it's sad to say, but we ladies are not an easy fix. You know, <laughs> we are really complex and, you know, and men for the male listeners out there, they're much easier. You know, yeah. I would say, I had a little short stint of taking care of men for about four years. And it was fun. I have to say as an OBGYN, I never got to take care of men. Uh, and it was interesting to see male patients and female patients in this realm and, and what they would come in and, and complain about. And I would say, 
uh, almost a hundred percent of the men would come in with some sort of sexual dysfunction, libido, yeah. uh, usually it's libido. Um, and it's so very interesting because there'd be many men that would come in and say, they had, you know, of course I asked all the other questions, but they'd have low energy. They're crying all the time. They're losing their right. muscle mass. <laughs> but when it hit the bedroom, they were in my door. Like they were like, they could not get in quick enough. And it's just so funny how men and women yeah. think. <laughs> and, and I would say, I would say hundred percent of my male patients had low testosterone. And here's the thing with low testosterone in men, you have to think why, you know, like there's right. one thing to replete it because I, I think with men, it's a really, it's a major hormone. You replete their low testosterone, you change their life. Totally. Really life changing. We ladies, we're not that easy, you know? Yeah. So as a conventional OB, I would think when, when women would come to me and say, I have low libido, I've never asked by the way, because back then there was no FDA approved medication for low libido, you know, because wow. women are very well studied. We cycle, we're hard to control. Right. Yeah. So, and I think they realized actually, no, I don't know if the modern medicine realizes how complex we are, not only hormonally, just physiologically, mentally, like we are just yeah. much more complex. So back in the day, I would actually, there was one FDA approved hormone replacement that had testosterone in it. And in retrospect, it probably killed women's livers because <laughs> estrogen and testosterone are both not great for your liver, but it was all I had. And I would never want to touch the subject. Like I would just like, Oh, here we go. Libido. What am I going to do with it? Right. Right. Because I was back in that world of, of a diagnosis and a pill. And when right. we don't really have a good pill, what do we do with it? Yeah. So now, like we're going to have many of your audience members th- getting told by their doctor, it's normal. Right. Right. You're aging. You've had kids. Your, you know, your menopausal, it's a hormone imbalance. Well, then what do I do about it? Oh, it's just how it is. <laughs> You're going to have to just live with it. So I'm yeah. seeing relationships crumbling or wives coming in saying, my husband says I need testosterone because that's what they need. Ladies, it is not that easy. And believe me, for <sighs> the past 20 years of working with women, I have tried testosterone in many a women and uh-huh. it doesn't always work. And I'm not saying like, I love testosterone in women. I think you're, you're correct. We don't have very much, but we are very sensitive to it. And I think totally. we got to hold on to what we have and definitely encourage doing things, lifting weights, in your protein, right. you know, like that will increase your testosterone exactly. even as we age. But, um, there are a lot of other things, you know, there are like all the other hormonal imbalances that we can have in the female hormones. For instance, if you become what they call estrogen dominant, meaning, you know, our two main female hormones are estrogen and progesterone. And there is, there are times where our our cycle, they, they vary in their levels, but a lot of times women in their perimenopausal years, late thirties, forties into their fifties can have like a natural, uh, imbalance because we're not necessarily ovulating every month, which is releasing the egg, our eggs are getting a little older than producing progesterone as much. And progesterone is always the one we never talk about. Yeah. Estrogen is what makes us beautiful women, right? It gives us our, you know, our silky plush skin Mm -hmm. and our lips and our beautiful hair, but progesterone is like our calming hormone. Mm -hmm. So think about it. And estrogen kind of makes us a little more emotional. So when we have a little more estrogen on board, when it comes to, in relation to progesterone, we are a little more irritated and irritable. We do gain the weight. We do get a little more bloated. You know, we do have heavier periods. So all those wonderful things that women talk about in their late thirties, forties, just think, wow, like, is there something hormonally going on? Am I out of balance? And are there things that I can do to help with that? Um, and you know, what is feeding into a lot of this? And actually I, I started to ask questions back when I was an OB with watching a lot of young girls go through early puberty infertility issues and, you know, the onslaught of women really just having a lot of problems in the perimenopausal years is like, wow, like, where is, are they getting any extra estrogen in their body? And they certainly are from a lot of toxins, which a lot of docs don't talk about toxins, you know, personal care products, how many, you know, women put on like over 500 chemicals on average in their body a day. And, you know, I'm not talking about single one thing, 500, but like one shampoo can have like 30 ingredients, a conditioner, 30 more ingredients, you know, How many makeup products do we put on our skin every day? Right. And lotions and perfumes and all of that is, is potentially disrupting both our estrogen and our testosterone as well as other hormones. So sunscreens, sunscreens, Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah. And including with men and then uh, and such things as plastics, plastics are huge, you know, and we're Mm -hmm. lots of studies out there with infertility and affecting testosterone, even in men and 
you know, so I'm a huge one to stand on my soapbox and talk about plastics and trying to transition to yeah. glass if possible and don't heat in plastic and right. fragrance products, you know, that, the, you know, there's tons of chemicals and all of these fragrances that are right. these like, I don't know the, you know, they're not, they don't have to tell you what's in them, but they're all, you know, terribly hormonal, hormonally disruptive in, in disrupting our chemicals in our body. Right. And then foods, it's like natural flavors and all these things that they don't, you have no idea what it is, but it's like, think about it. They've got a bottom line they're trying to meet. So yeah. what's the, how can I make this the cheapest and last the longest? Okay, cool. I don't care as long as I make money, you know, that's yeah. just how it is. And so, yeah, we're getting on an onslaught of all these things that are not from nature in and on our bodies constantly, you know? So yeah. Um, don't okay. trust that natural, that natural is a huge marketing yeah, natural. Thing. I'm like, Oh, what is natural? It doesn't really mean, mean anything. It, it's you know? got a picture of a barn with a sunrise over it on the front to trick you. It's like any, or a leaf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, um, so you know, there's the, the hormone impacts with libido and I, you know what, you're, you're making me laugh. Cause I saw a meme. I'm imagining this meme I saw once and it was like how men work. And it was like just a light switch. And it was like how women work. And it was like 50,000 gears and cogs yeah. and all the cogs. And it was just like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so I appreciate you advocating for women and, you know, yeah. helping them understand and, and, and being there and holding their hand through the process. You know, anytime I hear somebody who's very black and white and nutrition or anything like that, I'm like, either you're really uninformed or you don't actually work with people yeah. um, or you have an ego or something. Because if you work with people one-on-one, -on -one, you find out that what works for somebody doesn't for another. Right. People are more complex than that. We have to be able to like get in it with them and be like, what's going on, you know, and pick those clues together and piece it together. So with libido, um, you know, obviously I know you're looking at their horn. It's like, those are the clues. That's the information coming in. Okay. There's some, but then why? Right. And so what are some of yeah. those whys that you found? Well, you know, the biggest ones, toxins, huge, yeah. you know, and, and when we're seeing it in the forties, this is like 40 years of, of not only the chemicals we were born with that we were exposed to in utero, which are like over 200 right. umbilical cord, but you know, throughout our entire life. And and I can say this because I'm 48 and, and I sort of just had my aha moment, aha, aha moment seven years ago where I was like, and you know, it was really interesting because even up until about two years ago, I, the beauty care industry was just so hard to navigate. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, like that was the last thing to come off my list. But so toxins are huge nutrition, yeah. huge, right. you know, not right. only like all of the crap on our, you know, the pesticides and the GMO products, but the sugars, you right. know, the added sugars, all of the, like the dyes and all the food, the right. Franken foods, the things that aren't really, you know, my kids say, mom, I want chips. I'm like, they're not like, they're just produced in a lab. Like, you know, like, you know, and, and, and they are produced to be addicted. I like, know. You know you're addicted. They hire scientists to put stuff in this food. So you cannot just have one of any of it. So Totally. And I, I'm, I'm a kind of on a war against talkies right now. Holy cow. All the kids are eating those and they, they have like blue ones. It's literally, it's so bad. The other, they have, they have MSG and red 40 and canola oil and GMO corn. And it's just like this, like toxic bag of everything that can cause your brain to go wonky. And then we have teenagers on their phones till midnight mm -hmm. and no emotional processing at all. They're going through all these life changes. We're feeding them this crap. And then we're putting them on Adderall and pills and all this stuff. I have anxiety. It's like, Oh my gosh, you know, it's, there's so much education mm -hmm. needed there. And, you know, I, I think we live in denial a little bit. We live, we think like we weren't raised on it. Right. So our parents' generation, they had no idea about this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we have to be the way showers. We have to be the generational changers where it's like, we have new information now. So we can't keep living in that old paradigm. If we want to like help future generations live at a higher level. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate your awareness on that. And I think it all starts with us, right? You know, yeah. our next generation is not going to change unless we make we are that change and they see us making the change and right. you know, just bringing awareness to them as they grow up. And, you know, I do think, you know, again, it's never too early to sort of put on your radar and start taking action. And I know yeah. what we're talking about. There's a lot and I get it, but like, just start somewhere and just one foot in front of the other, totally. you know, and it, it got to start somewhere. 
Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking like, you don't have to like go in this huge overhaul. It's just like make a push as often as you can to eat food from nature. That's it. You can still keep eating all the other things that you eat. Just like proactively. I'm going to proactively make a salad. I'm going to proactively get some vegetables in. I'm going to proactively, I think I'm going to get regenerative meat. I'm going to order that box of that meat, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. it is. It's like, just make those little, little pushes. And it makes such a huge difference in the long run. And yeah, our kids see that and they respect it. You know, they're interested in it because it's high vibration. Mm -hmm. So it's like people are attracted to high vibrational things. So we, Mm -hmm. as we give that to ourselves, we attract, we invite others to just, uh, you know, be attracted to that for themselves. What about emotions? You know, we talked a little bit before we started about energy and healing and I see all your crystals and I think you got like a Buddha or something back there, you know? And I, so I appreciate that, you know, the, the understanding that a lot of healing is the emotional body. Mm. Um, so what have you found emotionally with, um, libido? I think you were telling me about like some different, uh, uh, like a checklist of things that you look for in regards to libido. Could you share that? Yeah, I have a roadmap because when I started pulling back, you know, again, 20 years working with women and, and really like that, that thing that I wanted to keep going to was the testosterone as well. Right. Cause that's just what we're ingrained in. And then I had to start in seven years of functional medicine, pulling back and saying, okay, wow, there are some women with really high testosterone that have no libido and vice versa. R- women with mm. really low testosterone with amazing nice. libidos. I'm seeing 20 year olds with no libido, but I'm seeing 80 year olds with an amazing libido. Like mm. this hormonally doesn't make sense. So, mm. um, you know, and emotionally, I think, I think because we are so bright programmed to think it's just one thing that we yeah. forget about the mindset part of it. Like, how do we, how do we feel about that ourselves? How do we wake up talking about ourselves? How do we go to bed talking to ourselves? Like, are do we practice gratitude? Are we grateful for at least what we have in our life? Or do we wake up thinking, oh my gosh, I got to do this, 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 oh, this went wrong. Right. You know, living in the future, not in the present, always living, you know, okay. Okay. What I, and I was just having this conversation with my, one of my clients this morning. I said, I see you're always in the future. Like, just try to be today. You know, like what, one moment, one moment at a time, you know? Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, you know, with libido is it's a relationship. A lot of times it comes down to relationship and I'm not saying a bad relationship. I'm just saying a little bit of, um, I think things start happening in relationships over time that we don't even, they're not even on our radar because we've, you know, I've been married, gosh, 17 years now with my husband for almost 21. And like, I think, you know, unless you make this conscious effort every day to not every day, but frequently to look at your relationship, things start falling by the wayside. And that includes communication, you know, how, and not only with your partner, with everyone in your life, like, I think we are so conditioned as women, like you said, like growing up, maybe we, we were high achieving. I know I was, and always getting the awards and this and that, and like always having to prove myself. And I think that carries over a lot. And I think a lot of women, experience that, but it carries over to our adulthood and mom being moms and thinking we have to do it all and that we can't ask for help and that we won't get our trophy at the end of the day, unless we do it all. Right. And I'm sorry to say no one's getting a trophy unless you want your bragging rights at the end of the day, but guess what? You were going to bed resentful because you got no help. You didn't ask for it. Right. And and the people in your life want you just want you to be happy. They don't want you to be like that. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. And you're falling into bed exhausted because you did it all. (laughs) Right. And you know, it's interesting because when I talk to my clients and I say, well, does he know how you feel? Or or he comes in and he drops on the couch after a day of work on his phone. Well, did you ask him to help you? Well, no, he should know. I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) He's not a mind reader. He doesn't know. So you really have to, you know, number one, ask for what you want you know, don't, don't expect to do it all. You're not a failure. If you don't do it all, you don't get that super mom trophy, unless you want to do, you know, like I said, have the breaking rights. That's fine, but you're going to be exhausted. And, and more disconnected from your kids. Sorry, I just have to say, because I was super mom forever. Cookies after school, meet you at the bus stop, craft time, the super over the top Valentines that we made off Pinterest. I was living that life. And I, I've heard, you know, I've talked to my kids about it and I've heard from so many adults. It's like my mom was this like super high achiever that was doing all this stuff, but she just wasn't, I just wanted her to freaking sit on the couch with me. Yeah. So it's like giving the opposite effect of what we think by like, I, I crushed it. I got my to-do list done. And it's like, you're disconnected from everybody in your life. You're so caught up in it. So anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. And then the other thing is setting boundaries. Like you said, you know, doing it all. I mean, I have so many moms that are like, they can't say no. It's like, they're on the PTA. They're in this committee. They're doing (laughs) that. They have a job. They're like, you know, and I'm like, whoa, just like, where's, and what's happening is, you know, I thought over the past year, everyone would slow down a bit and like be a little more 
like introspective and like a little more about self-care, but it's not happened. And I think more than anything, I'm seeing a lot of women, their self-care, they don't even know what that looks like anymore. And I'm not talking about facials or manicures, pedicures. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like, are you making time to move your body? Are you exercising? Are you even getting out and taking a walk outside? Are you able to sit and read a book? Are you able right. to do deep breathing? Right. You know, and I, it's like, I talk about meditation because I'm, I love to meditate and like, I mean, they just roll their eyes. Like, I don't have time for that. And I'm like, well, you don't <laughs> not, you, you don't have, you know, you, you, it's really beneficial to make even five minutes to just sit and sit quietly and breathe because you're not breathing all day. <laughs> Somebody said, if you don't have an hour to meditate, you need to meditate for two. I know. I was, I, that's what I was trying yeah. to talk. I'm like, what, what's that saying? Where, like, yeah. you don't, <laughs> I have time to meditate. That, but exactly. Cause when yeah. you hear that, I don't have time. It's like, Oh girl, you got 10 minutes. I'm saying yeah. if you don't think you, it's just that you don't want to, cause you're so yeah. patterned into this go, 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 go. And that's why you need to do it because so yeah. much of that go, go, go will fall away. And I really appreciate your message there. Cause I'm, I'm a rec a recovering yes woman for sure. Mm -hmm. And too. part of that self-care is, is I don't feel like having to do anything this weekend. I don't want to go to somebody's party. I don't want to hike with a friend. I don't know. I, I don't want to get on a phone call with anybody. I want to have all day Saturday, yeah. whatever the freak I want to do, I'm going to yeah. do that's self-care to me, you know, and that that's those boundaries and it's been a work in progress, but yeah, I appreciate that. It's like, you don't have to be there for everybody. They do actually don't need that. It's this ego structure that we build to get our own worth out of it. Mm -hmm. And really, truly like nobody needs anything from you. And when we can let that go, mm -hmm. Oh man, the pressure get, goes down and guess what yeah. goes up that libido that yeah. uh, it, it's sensuality. It's, 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 it's self-love. Like I think for women, uh, the connection to self, like sex is it's like, I like myself. I like how I look. I like how I feel like I'm able to tap into my own sensuality because, because of that, like you're saying with the self-talk and the, and the, yeah. the boundaries. Okay. Sorry. I'll, I'll let you keep going, but I, I'm loving what you're saying and I've lived it and it's true. Yeah. And, and I've seen it over and over with clients too. Yeah, no, no. And I just kind of want to riff on what you just said about like, even like the, the, the feeling like you always have to keep doing um, it's just, you are worthy just to be, yeah. you, you are worth it. Like, I think there's all this shame of like, oh, I'm sitting for five minutes. Oh my gosh. I shouldn't be sitting. Why not? Like, like five like minutes, Julia Roberts and eat, pray, love when she's in Italy and like finally gets it. And she's in her silk pajamas eating. Like I drink, I, I don't know what she was doing, eating chocolate over strawberries, reading a book, whatever that energy of just like, mm -hmm. yes. I rest and chill because I am a freaking queen and abundant mm -hmm. and I deserve this. Yeah. Oh man, American women, we especially, but probably globally, but man, we've been so, uh, our value has been built up in service, service, grind, 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 grind. And it's killing us. It literally, mm -hmm. I think that mentality is what's causing all of this adrenal, these adrenal issues, low mm -hmm. libido and everything. It's just mm -hmm. placing our value in mm -hmm. something that's killing us. You agree. Know, so, agree. Yeah. And you know, when I talk about libido, I say, it's just another symptom, just like burnout. Yeah. It's just another symptom that there's things going on deeper down that we really need to ask, like what is going on and why and, and yep. address that. And, yep. you know, I'm a huge proponent of supplements. Um, but just like medications, they can be a band aid. Yeah. you know, like I use them right. strategically. So for burnout or libido, like, to, right. you know, and there's some really beneficial herbs out there and such and essential oils and such to right. help with, um, with libido, but you got to fix the root cause. Like right. we got to figure out. And again, I use that word. I don't like to use fixed, but like what, why? And, yeah. and once, and it's so amazing. You get to that root cause and you, you address that so many things that you didn't even know were going on with you are going on. And that's the yeah. other thing I just want to say right. is we are so busy doing, we don't even know how we feel. I know. Right. Like women don't know. know. Like, I'm like, are you bloated after you? I don't know. I don't know. I know. I, I'm always bloated. I'm like, oh, well, that's just a normal part of your life now. And like, how's your energy? I don't know. I'm just always tired. Like they don't, they're not yeah. present enough to know like, okay, I feel better this time of day. I don't, or I feel bloated this time of day, or after I eat this or, you know, how you have, know. How's, how's your focus? I don't know. Like, I'm always just so foggy. And I'm like, like, they just, yeah. Don't it's a total dismissal of self, you know, and we've been raising that. I love that point when in our morning routine, um, we do, we write our gratitude and then we write how we feel when we think about those things to get in touch with identifying emotions. Yeah. And also women, you made me think like often really don't know what they want. When I ask that question, what do you want? Like, it's like, 
I have no idea. Like I haven't thought to ask myself that in like 30 years. Like I don't even know. And starting to identify what you want. That's a part of boundaries is like having preferences. Cause otherwise you're just doing whatever for everybody. And then being able to say no and know how you feel, man, like it, you're right. I love what you said. Um, those, those core stories, those core like wounds, honestly, or false beliefs. They're like, I see them as trees. Mm-hmm. And when you take out the whole tree, like all these branches, you didn't even realize how it was affecting your relationships, yeah. the way you look at money, the way you take care of your body, the way you eat, the way you parent, like, it's like, holy shit, that tree just completely, I, that story was infiltrating everything. So I love yeah. your, your point there. It's so true. Absolutely. And I think you, you know, a lot of times for real true wellness, mind and body. It's like, you have to go back to those, but those beliefs where they come from, how old were you? It's hard work. Yep. I get it. But like, yep. I've done the work myself and I continue to do the work about health. And, you know, if you see that your family's all obese and unhealthy and you're like, Oh, that's just going to be me. No, it doesn't have to be you. Like, yes, you have genetics, but you are not your genetics. You can right. actually defy well, your and, genetics. And on that note, do you now, are you obsessed with health and fitness and exercise because you have this giant fear story that you're going to become yeah. like that. And yeah. now you've got some addiction situation, yeah. you know, that, that stuff has to be addressed too. Right. Exactly. Like, exactly. What, it, it's basically looking at your life and like, where am I stressed the freak out mm-hmm. and life isn't serving me. Okay. What is actually going on? Like, yeah. you know, do you have sex issues in your marriage? okay, you don't want to have sex with your husband. That goes back to what you're saying. Like I, 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 I was married for 13 years and now I've been single. And I can say, I look back at my marriage and my ex-husband and I have a great co-parenting relationship now, but I'm like, dude, I did not communicate anything to you. Holy crap. I'm so sorry. Like I would just sit there and like resent you and like be thinking all these things. And then when it comes to you're not going to want to have sex with someone you're resenting. And mm-hmm. he didn't even know it, you know, he had no idea. So he's like, what's wrong. And I'm like, I don't like you, you know, mm-hmm. man. And so I appreciate your message on that too. And I would, I I have to say like, one thing I've learned about men is they are lovers, like deep, deep lovers. Like they love deeply. I think they love so deeply that they protect themselves from it sometimes. And I've also learned about men that they are really open for solutions. Usually like they really want to come together. They're very pretty pragmatic. I have found like they really, they're, they're willing to own their own shit. I think that's cultural a little bit, you know, like it's like self-accountability comes a little easier to them. I feel like sometimes that, you know, but man, it just comes, I think from women, from our side, it's that communication. And this is how I feel not coming at you and blaming at you, blaming you and like, you know, attacking you, but just like, this is how I'm feeling. Yeah. You know? And when you yeah. come and soft like that, it brings you together. It's so beautiful. I've experienced so beautiful. that now and it's like, oh man, it's everything. It's, yep. And you know, our brains are different. Like, you know, for instance, you know, men are very visual. That's why I say, you know, be comfortable in your body. Cause if you're comfortable in your body and you own it, regardless of exactly. shape, size, <laughs> they are so turned on. Like you don't need to look a certain way, nope. maybe in your mind, but if, if, and if you want to get to a certain point to make yourself that's for you. And while you're on your journey, just love your body the whole time. Right. Because yep. he, he doesn't care. He's just like, you love your body and own it. That's all he wants. Right. <laughs> exactly. He wants to see you make it regardless of anything, you know, shape, size, whatever. And, um, and you know, we ladies and they're not communicators. So we think that they're, oh, you're just not talking. That's that the brain is not, are, is not wired to be communicators. Like we are, mm-hmm. like we, we talk all the time, right? We talk about what's on our mind and we're also very yeah. visual in a different way. We read like facial expressions. Yeah. So if he comes in and he's looking a certain way, we take it like, what's the matter? You're wrong. Right. You're mad at me. Like <laughs> did I do something wrong. Am I supposed you're, or we're, you know, we, we just, it's just how we communicate. So yeah. I think like you said, just saying what you need, yeah. they are more than happy to help us help and not even help us. Here's the other thing. They think that we got it all under control. Cause we look like we have it all under control. Yeah. So we're like, all right. I'm not going to interfere because I don't want to get yelled at because if I try to interview, <laughs> she might yell at me. Right. Um, so sometimes men are just afraid to intervene and do it for you because they think, well, she's got it all under control. She always has had it under control, right? Yeah. However old the kids are like for 15 years, you've had it under control. So right. you do the grocery shopping, you do the cooking, you've got it under control. I guess I'm not needed. So right. and it comes a breaking point for women. Like you said, resentment is huge. And it's because yeah. of that lack of communication. Like they can't, yeah they're willing to help and they want to help. Um, and it's, and there's just sometimes too, that I, they try to fix it as well. They're like, 
men are just programmed to want to help you yes. and fix you. But there's yes. times I say to my husband, I'm just venting. Don't fix it. Yeah, just I know. Let me talk. <laughs> just be like a woman and just like, just hear me out because my girlfriends would want, want to fix it. They just listen to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And of course the past year, how many of us had had time to have girlfriend time. Right. So, yeah. and you know, our connection, men and women are just different with our connection as well. Like totally. we, a lot of times just want to be with somebody and they, they, a lot of times want more touching. So like our, love languages and how we communicate and, and communicate our love is, is sometimes different. So it's just, and that's, that's a great point too, is like women. Sometimes I think in men can do this too, but just speaking about women, we become these isolated islands, you know, mm-hmm. where we're just like in all our shit and we have all these goals and we have all this work to do and we have our to-do list. And it's like, Whoa, you know, like yeah. it can be easier if we'll actually like give ourselves space to go hang out with our girlfriends or yeah. go just be with our husband, you know, or our partner, whoever it is, you know, like, like that, that this isolated drive, 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 drive is it's cutting off the libido. It's causing the adrenal dysfunction. It's causing all of these problems when we can just actually really, truly just own our worth. We'll stop doing all of that and we'll ask for help and we'll be okay with making mistakes And you know, it's, it brings so much peace. And then that's when you start to like, you know, that loving relationship with yourself, you know? So I, yeah, I appreciate that so much. Did we, did we get through your roadmap? I think, did we end on communication? Uh, Yeah. I mean, (laughs) can you sum it up? Oh, wow. Well, you know, it's just this, and it's like this intertwining we- weave yeah. of things that, yes. you know, again, starting with the mindset and look at your relationship and it could be hormonal, but it could be related to, I mean, I didn't even touch on gut health and inflammation, yeah. which is kind of related to, um, nutrition and, and you know, emotions. underlying mood issues. And, you know, that yeah. all there, there's like this, and like you said earlier and stress, stress is huge. Like take right. a look at your stress. And, and it's kind of more, again, what we were talking about before being present. Like I, I see a lot of women running around. I'm so stressed. I'm so stressed about what, like awareness is key with anything when it comes to your health, like becoming aware, Beautiful. like you said, of what you want, if you're stressed, what are you stressed about and what can you right. delegate? What can you delete? Right. And what do you have to do? And beautiful. I think really being just very pragmatic and like, just very like, okay, this is what's going on and and taking control of it as opposed to just running around flapping your wings saying, Oh my God, I'm so stressed, you know? And, I, and I've been there too. I've done it. Um, but I think it's just slowing down and saying, okay, I, I, where can I take control of this situation? Yes. Yeah. I, I wrote an Instagram post once that challenged a lot of people. I wrote, um, overwhelm is, is a victim mindset because you're pretending that you don't have the skills or the brain power or the executive functioning enough to change. Like, and I love what you said, delegate, delete, or, uh, have to do or something like that. Yeah. yeah like exactly. It's like, uh, you know, cause stuff is always coming in. Um, I call it like Marie Kondo, your life, you know, like you can't just keep piling clothes in your no. closet. Eventually it's going to suck in there. It's so crowded. It's like, Oh, there's all this junk. It's weighing me down. And the same thing with our lives, you know, it's like new ideas, new business opportunities, new people. new. So then we have to kind of take that inventory of like, what is the part where this is not awesome anymore? You know, like, what do I need to get rid of here? Like this, I can't keep adding and never subtracting, you know, or you'll get overwhelmed. So it takes, that's why, you know, I'm sure you do morning routine. It sounds like with your meditation and stuff. And it's like having that moment with yourself where it's like, okay, hold on (laughs) what needs to be addressed, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, Yeah. yeah, I love your, your, what you're saying about awareness, um, physiologically, emotionally, mentally, you know, relationally. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, with a morning routine, routine. Um, it's so funny. I had, I have a friend and she like, you, a lot of times we're not men and will have this three hour routine in the morning. And we ladies, it's kind of like, you know, we get our stuff done. And I think just having some sort of you time in the morning, whatever yeah. that looks like. And I always say I'm a better mom, wife, doctor. Yeah. If I get my me time in, in the morning, um, start my day off right. And, uh, I'm much happier. So I just think 100%. having just whatever that you time looks like, yep. uh, just have it. And you are, you know, do not you not to feel, feel guilty or shameful for having this time alone. Right. Um, or time with your significant other. If you, you know, a lot of, a lot of couples have not seen much time alone over the past year because of the pandemic and the kids never leave the house and we never leave the house. So there's been a lot of family time, which has been great, but there's not been a lot of time for couples to communicate. So, you know, again, kind of climbing out of this pandemic now, like refine, if you think it's relationship, like just communicate, refine your, your significant other community, you know, tell them what you want, tell them what you need um, and start working on that. If you are feeling resentful, 
Yeah. Start working on that and start communicating and see if that we can kind of put that to rest. Yeah. Get that connection back. Yeah. I think overall I'm hearing like be an advocate for yourself, you know, yeah. and your body and your health yeah. and your self-talk and your relationships, like speak up, you know, like show up for you, you know, yeah, because you're worth um, it. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. So how do people partake of what you have to offer now? Is it one-on-one? Do you have other? Yes. Most offerings? of my work right now is one-on-one. Um, I am trying to, uh, um, really hard with group programs. I find because care is so individualized, right. you know, so large group programs are a little bit harder for me currently, but, uh, I am trying to break down my roadmap that I was just yeah. talking about into a little digestible because I do find it can be overwhelming if we put an entire time together where we're talking about, you know, the mindset relationship, but then toxins and hormones and that, that yeah, is like, yeah. whoa, like yeah. I think I'm already working with a lot of overwhelmed high <laughs> right. women. And right. so when I pour a lot of this other on them, it's, it's, it's like information overload and They're I'm working on 25 new things now on top of their overwhelm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I pride myself now that I work 100% online with women, uh, of really literally taking their hands and walking yeah. them through this Amazing. process and not overwhelming them anymore. Like I used to do in the office and, um, you know, so I am working on new things coming up as far as breaking down components of the roadmap one to keep the cost down. Cause again, I'm very yeah. mindful of cost of, of right. services and trying to just help more women just feel better, you know, in their bodies yeah. about themselves, achieve optimal health and wellness in a better libido at the end of yeah. the day. Yep, absolutely. And so your website is Dr. Renee Wellenstein. That's two L's guys. Um, and uh, you can go there. Where? What's your social? Where do you have a main social? Oh gosh, I'm all over social media. I'm <laughs> even on TikTok. Um, nice. Dr. Well. Yeah, Dr. Renee <laughs> Wellenstein across the board, Facebook, okay. Instagram, TikTok, not really on LinkedIn. Um, I also have a YouTube. I have a podcast, The Love the Leap with Dr. Renee. I am all over. What is your podcast name? Love the Leap with Dr. Renee. Nice. Okay. Awesome. I, my, like, the leaping, the whole yeah. intuition thing. This is how I do things in life. I just leap. I don't I love I it. Tread lightly. <laughs> yeah. I love it, girl. We'll, we'll link all that in the show notes okay. on YouTube and in the thank audio you. platform. So uh, Dr. Renee, thank you so much for coming on and sharing today. And thank you for being a bridger, a bridge between traditional Western conventional medicine and getting into that root cause. And I know you care because you're doing that one-on-one work, which is a lot of work, you know, and it's easy to just like throw out a program and be done but that's like the level of caring. It's like, you know, that that is what's needed for true healing. So thank you for doing that work. And I'll probably be sending some clients your way soon. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Thank you.